side here. It's gone six o'clock in the evening. The Tian He Stadium, where the world's best badminton players have been battling for this most prestigious of tournaments. So one more final to come. The men's doubles uh, final. Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe, last year's beaten finalists, up against the reigning world champions and twice winners of this title, Mahalada San and Hendra Sekiwan. Well, as far as the semi final knockout four was concerned, both semi finals were repeats of group matches. But the winners of Group A, Endo and Watanabe, they came through against the world number ones. But it was the runners-up from Group B, Asan and Sekiwan, that got revenge over Li Yan and Wang Chi Lin in their semi-final. So Endo and Watanabe only formed their partnership after the Rio Olympic Games. And throughout their careers, they've reached seven finals. This is their eighth. They've won three career titles for Asan and Setiawan. They've been playing together for much longer. This is their 31st career final, and they've already won 18 titles. So the left and right-handed combination, the Japanese pair a year ago, a loss to Ali Junhui and Liu Yu Chen in two straight games. But it should be said that Endo, the man in the background had a right calf injury and I can remember Morton and I were talking about how impressed we were that he kept going that he didn't give up because he really was struggling but this uh, for uh, this Japanese pair is their fourth final in their 20th tournament of the year they've won all of their matches so far because as I was telling you they topped grape A they beat the uh, beaten finalists from three years ago, the number three seeds, Kamora and Sonoda, in the first round. Uh, in, then on Thursday, uh, they beat the world number ones, the 2017 winners, Gideon and Sukumolio. Then on Friday, they beat the uh, defending champions, Li Chunhui and Liu Yu Chen. That was uh, one of the best matches I think I've seen the Japanese pair ever played. They were brilliant. And then in the semi-final, for a fifth time in a fifth meeting this year, the Japanese pair beat the world number ones, Gideon and Sukumodio. And as you can see, it was three games yesterday in the semi-final. So to the two-time former champions, they won the title in 2013 and 2015. And both those years were the years that they won the world title. They won a world title earlier this year. Are they going to make it a hat-trick that every time they win the world title, they also go on to win at the end of season championships? Well, uh, they won their first two matches on Wednesday, a repeat of the All England final against Char and Seoul from uh, Malaysia. Then on Thursday, beat the left and right-handed combination, Lu Ching Yao and Yang Po Han, needed three games there. And then in the last of the group matches, uh, they lost against Li Yang and Wang Chi Lin in just 29 minutes and reversed that yesterday by beating that same pair, 21-14, 21-9, in just 26 minutes. An extraordinary turnaround in fortunes in two consecutive days for the reigning world champions. So, Hassan and Sefia won, trying to equal Matthias Bow and Carsten Mogensen's record of three men's doubles titles at the end of year championships. No standing in their way is a pair that is playing so well at the moment. And that pair that's been in terrific form is Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe. For Hiroyuki Endo, it's his third final. 
at the end of season championships because he reached the final in 2012 when he was playing with his former partner Kenichi Hawakawa. Uh, they lost out to Bo and Mogensen in that final. And of course, he lost in the final last year with his partner of today. But for Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan, what an astonishing year they have had. Their third world title. And this today is their 11th final in their 19th tournament of the year. They've won three titles, the All England Championships. That was their second All England five years after their first. They won in New Zealand as well, a Super 300 event. And of course, the world title was their third title that they won this year. Add to that uh, seven more finals. And in five of those finals, they lost to their teammates, Gideon and Sukumolio. But this, as you can see, is the seventh meeting between these two pairs. And Endo and Watanabe have only won the once. And that was at the group stage of last year's World Tour Finals. But Hassan and Seti won, have won the last four encounters. The last time they met was the quarter-final of the Denmark 750 event. 21-15, 21-14 in just 27 minutes. And I know Steve Pedersen and I were talking earlier in the week about the Sun and Seti won. Uh, they either win in double quick time or they lose in double quick time. They don't seem to like the long rallies. I guess that's understandable at the age of 32 and 35. Yes. Yeah. It's quick business. Yeah. But they're the man who today is contesting a third final. Hiroyuki Endo, who will turn 33 tomorrow. What a wonderful early birthday present it would be if he could win this title. Born in Kawaguchi City in Saitama. And as you saw there, his highest ranking was number two with Kenichi Hawakawa. But I can tell you, that with this man, the 22-year-old from Suginami, which is part of the greater Tokyo region, they have been as high as four in the world ranking, so they're currently number six. Fourth final in their 20th tournament of the year. Both these pairs have actually played a lot of tournaments. I suppose that's indicative of all players at the moment, as Morton was explaining during the women's doubles that players feel they have to play a lot of tournaments. Mohamed Hassan is the younger of the two men, uh, born in Palembang in South Sumatra. They have been world number ones, this pair. And that was 38 consecutive weeks uh, between the end of November 2013 and the middle of August the following year. Hendra Setiwan is 35 years of age, born in Pemalang in central Java. And he won his fourth world title on his 35th birthday, because not only has he won three gold medals with his partner of today, he won gold in 2007 in Kuala Lumpur with Marcus Kido, with whom he also won Olympic gold in Beijing in 2008. Henrik Boas of Denmark, I'll rump off this one, and Salmin Ao from Hong Kong, the service judge. Hassan and Setiawan, the only men's doubles pair this year to contest finals at all four levels of tournament, and now all five levels of tournaments. So the Indonesian pair winning the toss of the coin. Their choice was to start 
this near side of the court as we're looking at them at the moment. So Yuta Watanabe getting this men's doubles final underway. My goodness me. Lucky net cord from the off from City of One. You just said they don't want long rallies and that's the way to go. <laughs> that's the way to do it. <laughs> This is actually the second meeting between these two pairs in a final. The first was this year's New Zealand Super 300 event. And the Indonesians won in three thrilling games, 21-17 in the deciding game, an hour and seven minutes. We wouldn't mind more, another one like that, would we? No. The, the good thing, looking at this uh, doubles final is the fact that uh, Endo and Watanabe have, have got the defence and the ability to withstand the pressure and the flat drives as well against uh, Asan and Setiawan. So chances are that you know we, we can have a really good match here. So often we see that uh, the Indonesians are overmatching other pairs in, in those two departments. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a wonderful example of the good defence. This man, Hendra Setia, one blocked back to the net when Watanabe was just standing there, waiting just for Just standing it. there. That's great judgment. It is. Wow. Well, oh, have you had a, the opportunity to watch the Japanese pair so far this tournament? Have you called no, any no of their I, matches? No, I haven't. Because I've been very impressed with them this week. Yeah, I, I remember you told me that you really feel that they have they've played well. Yeah. And of course, twice beating uh, Gideon Sukumoyo is uh, telling a good story. Yeah. Seen from their perspective. No, oh, that's too flat, well long. It's 
two mistakes on service return, flick surf. Yeah. He's a clever player, is Hiroyuki Hendo. Japanese coaching bench of Park Devon and Tan Kim Hurt. That's a second service error from Hendra Sevier one. He's not the most steady of service. But of course, he's serving fine and okay, but uh, we will see mistakes on, uh, on his serving now and again. But it's definitely living up to our expectations of uh, short rallies. Yeah. 9 8 up in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, that could be pushing the longest rally so far, which <laughs> is close, <laughs> which has been 16 shots. Maybe not quite as long as that. This will be the longest rally. There. And the reigning world champions go to the mid-game interval. Indeed, it was the longest rally, 21. Go to the mid-game interval with the advantage, a three-point advantage to be precise. Well, he's obviously talking about you to Watanabe, because he's yeah. demonstrating, showing, showing a left hand. <laughs> Well, he didn't appear to be wearing that strapping on his forearm yesterday, Mohammed Hassan. Harry oh, Panagi telling him the recipe you want. Got to be a little more patient. Good rally. Oh, behind the back. Yeah. Yeah, now we're getting some longer rallies. It's all starting out with uh, good defensive work from uh, the Japanese. And that's what they need to do to stay in the match and in the rallies, is to make sure that they survive the, the first pressure from uh, the two Indonesians. So do you think that they will um, direct more attacks towards uh, 
Watanabe. Do you think that was part of the um, the the coaching situation at the mid-game interval? Or? I don't know if that was specific to that. No, I I really don't know. Do you think they should be directing more of the attacking play to Watanabe? I don't know. That's that's why I, I actually think he's he's a very crafty defensive player, and he, he's got uh, good ways of um, diverting shots from him and finding the gaps and so on from his mixed doubles as well. So that's that's actually why I was asking. landed in came back in with the drift the sideways drift How did he get that? Brilliant! Well, there's certainly no lack of effort. Oh, it's wonderful, Badminton. So far, Hassan has been most at the net. Which is a little bit surprising to me. Normally, uh, Mohamed Hassan is... is working a lot from the back as well, but it's, it's been Hendra Setiawan who's working a lot from the back here, here in the beginning of this uh, game. Yeah, and I've noticed that earlier in this tournament. So, because normally it's uh, Mohamed Hassan that's really working quite well from the back. But if you notice, Mohamed Hassan has got some strapping on his right calf muscle outside his compression stockings. Yes. And that right calf muscle that he had problems with earlier in the year injured that at the Korean Open. No, it was just before the Korean Open. They pulled out of the Korean Open, didn't they? And I think he's aggravated it. You can see it clearly there. Because to me, clearly, the, the favourite formation for Asan and Setiawan is uh, Setiawan at the front, and Asan, who is hitting better from the back than Setiawan. And of course, the interception of Setiawan is just the world famous, isn't it? Yes, exactly. interception there by yes. Hassan. It's just mind-boggling. So because crisp. Of, yeah, I was going to say it was the timing of it, wasn't it? Crisp shot. Always miss that. Always going to challenge. I think he'll lose that challenge. Yeah, he looks out. That's one 
Challenge lost, only one remains. Watanabe is using the right tactics when they, when they do defend, they move their opponents on the back line to make sure that they're slightly out of position when they're hitting. 16 all. Not the best of serves from again. Hendro Sadia one. Turn. So hard and tough to get out of that service yeah. situation yeah. with Hassan and Setiawan. They are awesome when it comes to the one, two, three. Good anticipation by Watanabe. Straight away he moved to cover that open space. brilliant but I liked that Watanabe instead of he was so tempted to go for the flat exchange he blocked it and that forced the Indonesians to lift it and then partner Endo came into it and three smashes and it was it was a winner yeah instead of so many times we see other pairs being tempted to go for the flat exchange and they never win it against Hassan and Setiawan no two point advantage and two points away from this opening game as well left. Yeah. Good spacious awareness there from uh, Setia one. Landed in. That's perfect control. Another good rally, though. Very fast. And there was a little block again. I know you got yeah. the net cord, but you're right about the change of pace and the awareness. Or who's going to have the game point opportunity? Oh, my goodness. Perfect, perfect net shot from Hendro Setiawan. And the rally before, it was a perfect, perfect lift. Yeah. Game Talk, point. Talking about timing. Unbelievable. Oh. Oy, 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 oy. Fabulous. Desperation defense from the Japanese pair, but it was worth it from their perspective. The final disguise drop shot. 
from Yuta Watanabe. Uh, I'm still not happy with the cross-court lift there. It was straight up in the forehand of Watanabe. So 20 all, an extra points required until there's a clear two-point winning margin. So having just saved a game point, the Japanese pair, now they have a game point opportunity themselves. Rally. It's a very good rally. And almost certainly the longest rally of the match so far. There's 65 shots. What a way to save game points. This is just getting better and better, isn't it? Yeah, first uh, in the Watanabe saved yeah. on the floor. And this time it was uh, this very long rally saved by uh, Asan and Setia One. But don't you think that these longer and long rallies are favoring uh, the Japanese? Definitely. Definitely. You know, if, if it goes on and on, yeah. will uh, Asan and Setiawan be able to sustain the pressure and, of course, keep up the pace? Oh, that was a good sail from Mohamed Asan. Very tight, skim the net. And now it's a uh, Second game point opportunity for the two time former champions. Oh, my goodness. a tumble serve, you know. Mm. Yeah, I saw that. Brilliant. Well, it'd be third time lucky for the Indonesians. A third game point opportunity. What a delightful change of pace from Hendra Setia one. Set up in a very nice way because of the power from Hassan at the back. Yeah. That favoured formation you were talking about. Exactly. Oh, another service error. Oh, he's challenging. He's challenging. Well, if they're wrong, they haven't got any challenges left. But if they're wrong... If they're right, they have a game. If they're right, they have the game. Here we go. 
they have the opening game. Extraordinary. What a challenge from Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Sediwan. Oh, my goodness. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Look at the smile of Hassan. 24-22. In 24 minutes, that is just two minutes shy of their entire match length in the semi-final. And we've only had the only game. It will, however, be very interesting to see how uh, Endo and Watanabe is co coping with the fast end of the court. Yeah. That would be very interesting to see. So Morton, I promised to bring up about Denmark. Yes, you did, actually, yes. I did. I almost forgot. This <laughs> is the 12th end of year championships since the inception of the Super Series, and now we call it the World Tour. And 2019 is the first time that no pairs from Denmark have qualified for the men's doubles. Not only that, yep. I know. a men's doubles pair from Denmark had reached the semi-final for 10 consecutive years at the World Tour Finals. So not only were they qualifying pairs, they yes. were doing well here. They were doing well, three times they won it. Exactly, yeah. with Bo and Morgensen. Yes. That's disappointing from a Danish perspective, but there's it been a change of partnerships and... Yeah, but uh, there is no doubt that since uh, Wouter Yu and uh, Christina Peterson stopped, uh, Fischer have stopped, uh, Bowen Morgensen have stopped as a partnership and so on. There has been change of partnerships, but they have also you know, got older and older and older, so kind of forgot to bring in the new generation in my book. Yeah. Well, here we go. Let's see what happens. I'm as eager as you, Morton, to see how the Japanese pair cope with this change of ends and the fact that they've got to be careful with the drives and the lifts. coach asking his players to be wary of or alert to the cross court that the Japanese pair are playing a lot of cross court <laughs> Is that something you'd notice Morton? Um, not really No I uh, haven't either I'm sure if coach is saying it, then uh, he's right. Do you know, that was a shocking serve from Hiroyuki Endo. Yeah. Got away with it. Well, both pairs have got one player that's struggling with the serve. It's Hendra Seti, one for the Indonesians, and it's Hiroyuki Endo for the Japanese pair. The two most experienced players. Yeah. That's a much better, sir. Oh, that's terrific. Terrific shot. Yeah, well played. It's nice that either way, whoever, whichever pair wins, history is going to be made because either the Indonesians will equal Bo and Mogensen as the most men's doubles titles at the end of season championships or for the first time ever, a Japanese, a Japanese pair, pair to win yes. the men's doubles discipline. Oh my goodness, that's gone wrong.
He's gone with the flick. Oh, my goodness. Oh! Terrific rally. It's interesting that uh, when the block shots are coming to Watanabe, he is able, like what we see here, killing it at the net or be very decisive at the net. When they play this similar shot to Endo, he is not that decisive. Oh, what a save. It's a shocker, isn't it? The problem for Endo is that it's tough for him to flick it. Because yeah. he's playing with the drift. Oh, my goodness, the screen's gone there. Yeah, that's for sure. But once again, you see Watanabe really rushing in at the net, taking control. from the Indonesian point of view, I think uh, Hassan, Mohamed Hassan, should be trying to be a little bit more dominant and as what he is now. But I think you are possibly right that uh, that potential injury is, is still there. And that's why he's maybe not able to you know, really push off. Yeah. But this is a nice little lead for the Japanese pair. Four point advantage at the mid game interval. Sure, it's a mixed. <laughs> yeah. I know Jeremy Gunn does the same for them as the mixed doubles coach in yeah, Japan. There is a, a yeah. mix of English and, and Japanese together. So a four point advantage for. Indo and Watanabe. Oh, terrible, terrible sir. <laughs> Not only does Endo himself knows that his his serve has 
he's lost his confidence in his yeah. serve. That gives confidence to his opponents because they know that he's struggling. Yes. So it'll give them confidence in everything they're doing. But there are a lot of players around the world that's uh, suffering the same yeah. situation in, in the ability to be able to serve in, in doubles. Strings gone. Right Mohammed Hassan. Oh, block. Yeah. Quite clearly, the longest rally of this second game. Well, once again, I would like to reiterate that uh, I still think this is working in favour of uh, Endo and Watanabe. These, These long, long rallies? Yes. I think the sting uh, in the uh, attacks and smashes from uh, Asan and Setia one is kind of uh, disappearing. I don't know whether that was a good flick serve or whether he just didn't read it or whether that was a bit of fatigue or the injury that yeah. he was slow to get back there, son. We'll never know. No. Just amazing skills from uh, Hassan here. Yeah. So quick in his reactions. Yeah. In, in doubles, 
and especially with Asan and Setiawan, a three-point lead is nothing. It, no. it, it can change in, in one minute. Yeah. That you were saying more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now it's extremely important it. for uh, Setiawan to to hold his serve. Yeah. That's a good serve. <laughs> and equally important to Endo now. I think he'll flick. No. Oh, what about that shot? Yeah. The touch and skill, the finesse from Sethia one is just extraordinary. Virtually able to do it every single time when he's playing these <laughs> approach shots, and he does it at the pressure points. Yeah, this Some, someone is standing there, but he doesn't care. Yeah, he plays the shot, and they're back level. Five of the last six points. of seven points to go into the lead and just two points away from taking their third title at the end of season championships. Play the block shot again. It's match point opportunities. Seven of the last eight points to the reigning world champions. Extraordinary. But we've seen it time and time again from this Indonesian combination. Brilliant. Well saved by Hiroyuki Endo. And who is going to serve? Watanabe. Watanabe. Setia one at the end of season championships. And they equal the record of three titles that Boa Morgensen won in 2010, 11 and 12. Of course, Hassan and Setia one haven't won consecutive titles, but it's remarkable. Their three titles, the three years that they won the world title earlier on in the year. They are absolutely delighted with that victory. 24, 22, 21, 19. Eight of 
the last 10 points. And the victory to Mohamed Hassan and Ken Marosetti won. 24, 22, 21, 19 in a match lasting 44 minutes. They are a remarkable combination. And for a second consecutive year, Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe have to settle for second best. A third final for Hiroyuki Endo, who will turn 33 tomorrow. Three times he's lost the men's doubles final at the end of the year championships. But that was a great performance, wasn't it? It was, a, it was an interesting match. We started off saying that there was going to be short rallies, but we had some terrifically long rallies. Yeah, we had. And I, I credit uh, Endo and Watanabe because they, they have that ability to keep the, the rallies going. They, they have that ability to stay with Hassan and Setio and when it comes to flat exchanges, block defense and so on. So they can keep them on court, and I think we had a wonderful final here. Yeah, we certainly did. And before the prize presentation for the men's doubles, I normally ask you about an outstanding moment of the tournament, but because this is the end of season championships, uh, an outstanding player, of course, the BWF have given their awards, but yeah. in your opinion, the most outstanding, uh, memorable thing for you this year? Um, oh, there are many, many. Um, I, I'm still mentioning Ang Siyong. Yeah. 